90 crucial minutes for Celtic begin with a huge Celtic support in the terraces, perhaps around 18,000 inside Love Street. For this, the final league match of the season. And Celtic with the highest possible stakes. So Nunn coming out, something in the role of bridesmaids this afternoon. But Green Gallic will have the match, there's no question, they're very determined to make life difficult for Celtic. So Nunn doing without two key players, Steve Clark. The defender is out, and the World Cup hopeful goalkeeper, Campbell Money, is out of the side. The replacement is Jim Stewart for St. Martin. And Brian Hamilton wears number four. It's our first look at him in Scott Sport. 18-year-old midfield player and a man, I'm assured, with a very big future. Push in the back by Godfrey on McLean. The Grains free kick looking for Johnston. Cover was provided by Derek Hamilton for St. Martin. McGrain with the throw. Johnston. Challenged in the end by Hamilton. But once again, Celtic have a corner kick. Oh, and Archdeacon again going across, taking them on both flanks for Celtic. Paul McGugan joining the Celtic attack. And a great header by Brian McLear. Six minutes gone, and McLear does it again for Celtic. Well, it couldn't have been simpler or more effective. In swinger from Archdeacon, McLear with a run towards the near post, a powerful header, and Stewart was left stranded. Well, what a start for Celtic. Ryan McLear, such a key man for them up front this season, making his presence pay once again, and the huge Celtic support celebrating in style. Still Archdeacon, and a good tackle by Godfrey, kept his eye on the ball. He's found McGarvey with the clearance. It's Patrick returning it. Tommy Burns intercepts. Archdeacon is onside this time. McLear and Johnston waiting in the middle. Sigmund trying to get defenders back. There's Johnston. Brilliant save by Stewart. Turned away in the end by Abercrombie. But it was Archdeacon who beat the offside trap. Now this high cross falls beautifully for Johnston. Powerful header and there goes Stewart to his left. And now we're probably played that against the post and back before out for the corner. The challenge by Fitzpatrick but it's picked up by Paul McStay. Misunderstanding with McLeod allowing Fitzpatrick to win possession for St. Mun. Good tackle by McGrain. Three kicks been given against Billy Abercrombie. Celtic players suggesting that they would have been happy to accept the advantage. Hamilton's header straight to McClare, now Johnston. Paul McStay. Good cross, Johnston's there. Couldn't get enough of the header. Frustration for Mo Johnston. With a good piece of play out on the right by Paul McStay. This is a fine angle cross with the left foot. Johnston trying to get more on the header, and Stewart happy to see it go up. Guggen's clearance. Another from Bay looking for Gallagher at the edge of the box. Garvey going for the ball with White. Youngster not being tempted into anything rash, and McGarvey turned it away for the Celtic goal. Kick. <laughs> Good 
Godfrey's header, McGarvey's free in the right. Chance now for St. Mern. Coming inside White. Fine save initially by Bonner and Gallica's header. Deflected over for a corner kick. But McGarvey almost making his former teammates pay. The headed clearance from Godfrey. McGarvey getting in behind White. Checking inside. And this is a splendid save from Pat Bonner. Over the top with a deflection. That's why it's a corner kick. Billy Abercrombie trying to set up the in-swinger, wind assisted, an awkward one for Bonner, and he got a vital touch to the ball with McGarvey hovering right behind him, well just see how close this was, the ball swerving in on the wind, Bonner at full stretch, there was McGarvey waiting and Bonner's touch was good enough. Clear the touch on towards Johnston, one and one, but McGodfrey's done well to stall the progress of Johnston. Here's Tommy Barnes, well gathered by Stewart to prevent the corner kick. Garvey's head flick, played back by McGugan. Clear doing well, winkling the ball free to McStay. Here's Mo Johnston. It's there! Celtic, and it was brilliantly set up by this pass from Paul McStay. Johnson was one thought in his head, racing in and goal. The power beat Jim Stewart, and Celtic are now two ahead. So Mo Johnson with his 20th of the season, and Jim Stewart looking a little bit disappointed. No doubt feels he should have kept that out. The Celtic fire now in full voice. The defender, of course, on events at Dens Park, but as long as Celtic can win by three clear goals, he can do no more than hope that Dundee do the rest. Abercrombie in disgrace, McGrain with a delicate ball to Murder McLeod. Here's Paul McStay. Finding Aiken, now McGrain, Celtic, and full cry now as McClare gets free on the right. There's Johnston. Absolutely magnificent. One of the goals of the season. Set up inside the Celtic half, a final ball from McGrain, releasing Brian McClare, his pace. And the final pass to Johnston was perfect, and Stewart this time completely helpless. So Mo Johnston gets his second of the match. Celtic are three up. And how the Celtic fans are enjoying this with just 11 minutes of the first half left. What an opening burst from Celtic. There's Brian Gallagher, picked up by Abercrombie, and Brian Hamilton has a chance now for St Murn on his own. Off the line by White. Well, Brian Hamilton and Stewart thought he'd done enough. Great pass this from Abercrombie. Brian Hamilton not picked up at the edge of the box, and the shot blocked on the line by White. This is vintage stuff now from Celtic. Games by Godfrey. And then on by Gallica. Just goes Aiken once again. The Dugan's pass is intercepted by Derek Hamilton. Here's McGarvey. Abercrombie. McGrain. Norton McLeod. Barnes. No question about it, Celtic are certainly playing like champions. Lars Deacon testing Tom Wilson. Makes his way to the byline, here's Martin McLeod, now McStay. 4-0 to Celtic. Paul McStay, thundering in goal number four. A 
and it was down to the creative play of Art sticking it on the left. Now look at the way he gets away from Wilson, holds off the challenge. How the dummy from under the crowd? How about this? The thunderous pass. Stuart never moved. Paul McStay brought that one right on the meat and enjoyed the feel of his life during the season. Jim Stewart must be putting shell shot. Johnston. The player is on his own for the moment. Now supported by McGrain. To the end of an incredible period of 45 minutes. The Celtic at their very best. They started in six minutes with a flashing header from Brian McClare from Mark Stevens for a kick. Then Mo Johnston went through the right of Paul McStay's pass. Then the best developed goal of the four in the first half set up and finished in the end by Mo Johnston. And then when Arch Deacon made his way to the byline and pulled it back for Murray McClough's dummy, it was Paul McStay who thundered in his own candidate for goal of the season to make it at half-time here at Love Street. St. Nun nil. Celtic 4. We're going to start the second half and news of course has reached the Celtic fans inside Love Street. The half-time position at Dens Park where there are no goals at the moment. So they have certainly enjoyed that first half from Celtic to the full. Four goals and some sparkling play from midfield and of course up front with Johnston and McClare and Archdeacon. Gallagher wins the corner kick off White. Up goes Godfrey again. You see Brian McClare going back to mark the central defenders, Cooper and Godfrey of St. Mun. Regularly, while Abercrombie re spots the ball. Bonner's committed, colliding with one of his own colleagues. Fitzpatrick back to Abercrombie. Headed away by Aiken. Powerful shot by Godfrey and Mackey. Can't get it past Pat Bonner. Great save from Bonner, he's taken a knock. Set up by Abercrombie on the right. Fine out swinging cross, nodded on by Aiken. Godfrey kept the shot down well. There was Mackey and Bonner's courage saved the day for Celtic. <laughs> so Bonner is fit to resume in goal as Abercrombie's corner comes over. And a fine save again from Bonner, this time from Neil Cooper. Bonner certainly earning his bonus. Corner kick from Abercrombie. Neil Cooper's powerful header and Bonner at full stretch to beat it out superbly. There's Bonds. Now McStay. Through the middle for McClure to chase. Which he does willingly as always. And it's Stewart's throw out, which starts. From an attack, this Fitzpatrick. White to the next day. Someone trying to play Celtic offside. We failed. Here's Johnston. Now Mother McLeod. McClare! Nine minutes into the second half. Five nil to Celtic. And that one certainly with a tinge of good fortune. McStay beat the offside trap. Johnston hanging back, going forward, playing it back to McLeod. He tried a shot for goal, miscued completely, and McLeod took advantage of the ball landing at his right knee. Another McLeod has just the pass. Brian Gallagher is still on the ground after the challenge from McGugan. That's for Brian Hamilton. All running away from him, rather. We'll have to start the build-up again. Barnes is in the way. 
And Brian Hamilton checked out of the foil on Tommy Bottoms very sensibly. Bottoms trying to pick up a run from Roy Johnston. And that's Johnston who's tackling Jim Stewart. But there's a serious problem, I fear, for Brian Gallagher inside the centre circle. There's the St. Run striker. Never got up after the challenge from Paul McGugan in the air. It looked as though he landed awkwardly on that left ankle. Well, here's the incident which caused the problem. There's Gallagher going up. McGugan won it from him. There's Gallagher going down, stumbling awkwardly. And that's what did the damage. The stretcher has arrived, but the referee helping to carry Gallagher off. Well, a very sad sight always. Any player leaving the field in such circumstances. Complete accident, but it takes Brian Gallagher out of the match. And it's a very sad end to the season for him. It is Gardner Spears who's coming on. Turn back by Aiken again to Bonner. The player's header picked up by Neil Cooper and the major question I think here at Love Street on the field is whether or not the player or Johnston can get a hat-trick. Splendid way to end the league season. Here's Tommy Barnes in space. Johnston waiting in the middle. Couldn't get it beyond Jim Stewart. And it's come behind by Godfrey for the corner. Another beautiful pass forward. Bond sprinting into space. Putting it against the legs of Stewart. And turned behind by Godfrey. Now back with Tom Wilson. Brian Hamilton's on the right flank. Trying to check in up inside Archdeacon. It's back with Wilson. The angled cross, a chance for St. Martin, and again it's Pat Bonner. He's got the spears with the header. Well, there was a flag up for offside, I think. But that doesn't detract in any way from the goalkeeping of Bonner. Wilson stepping inside Aiken. The angled cross. The header from up from Spears for a save. Didn't count in the end, but some um, great play from Bonner. And the applause greeting the early departure of Danny McGrain. The replacement is Peter Grant. Tremendous applause there for McGrain as he came off. Paul McStay. Well, Stuart, you need two bites. Goal for Dundee, sheer bedlam around the stadium. Well, you don't need to hear any more news than that. Dundee clearly have scored at Dens, and let's lift off here at Plum Street. Oh, what incredible scenes! Celtic supporters rejoicing.
blustering around the Celtic bench. Spears in the playoff. And there's the final whistle. Celtic have won by five goals to nil. Paddy McGrain goes on to convey the news of the position at Dan's Park. The Celtic supporters in the field. But still no news at all from Dan's to confirm the final whistle. So on, although surely now it's on the Alcambati to hear that Celtic have won the league championship in the most dramatic David Hay Celtic have, have won the Premier League title in dramatic circumstances. How on earth do you feel? I think a miracle has happened today because after the season we've had whereby we were a bit in different form like and then towards the end of about two months ago we just played to hang in like but their players have been exceptional the last six weeks and all credit to the players for winning the championship. What on earth did you tell your players before today's game? Because they played in spectacular form, didn't yeah. they? First off, we felt that we could win here and get the goals to do it like. But at half time, what I felt was we heard that Dundee were winning one nothing. I mean, there was a wee bit of lapse in the whole atmosphere here. But fortunately, Dundee got the two goals at the end. Could you honestly believe it was within your capabilities today to pull it off? Yes and no. I felt we could do it, but we still had to hope for Hearts to beat, and that happened. What about this support? They went mad at the full-time whistle, didn't they? No, yeah, no, just now. They're, they're the best in the land. I've always said this. They've supported us through the, the lean times this season, kept their faithful support going, and pleased for them as much as for Celtic, the, the club. You're a quite an assuming chap, David Hay. Will you have a, a bit of a party tonight? I'll have a few drinks, I think. Well done, well done. Thanks very much. And the celebrations continue despite the steady downpour of rain. None of these Celtic supporters have noticed the difference, and I'm sure the players feel exactly the same. Well, these are the happy scenes which looked impossible just about a week ago, but in a tremendous finish to the season, Celtic going 14 league games undefeated. They've come through in the end to win in the last possible day of the season, with just minutes left when they got the news from Dens Park about Dundee beating Hearts. The celebration began, they've been going on ever since. The rain teeming down and the Celtic players now going right round the stadium in their lap of honour. And on the performance this afternoon, they're certainly worthy champions. At the moment, it's very hard to believe. I see all season, we've been hanging in there, hanging in there. We said eight games ago, if we won eight out of eight, we thought we'd win the league. Well, we won eight out of eight. But I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's a, it's a fairy tale. It's like a book. So it is. What about today? You needed to win by three clear goals. I mean, did you expect to score as many as five? We knew we had to get out and score goals. I mean, that, that, that's, that's what Celtic are best at, getting and scoring goals. I mean, it's, that's the point behind us. We couldn't fail to score five. We went a bit quiet in the second half, waiting for the need to score. But what a roar from the need to score. Tremendous. Well done, Roy. This is mayhem. Mayhem. Bombwick State, Celtic have lifted the Premier League in the most dramatic circumstances. Can you believe it? I just can't believe it at all. I always knew we had a chance of winning it. No, Dundee done your job for us, but that was always a bit unpredictable. I knew we were going to beat St. Murray a few goals. We went and done it. We were backing these guys here. We've done it. And I'm just glad to say we won the championship. It's been unbelievable. What do you make of it? There's absolute chaos. Uh, it's mental, but I think they all deserve it. They do. It's their day. Their day. What are you going to do tonight, Paul? Uh, I think I'm going to have a wee drink. Maybe. Celebrate. Well done. Oh. What amazing scenes and what a remarkable match. And our besieged reporter was Jim White. Well, even so, you have to feel sorry for Hearts who played so well for so long, only to be pipped at the winning post. What a finish.